a new city. We're in Udaipur, India. The perfect two-day itinerary for Udaipur, the White City. It is often called the most romantic city in India because of its lakes and palaces. Udaipur is formerly the capital of Muar Kingdom. It was founded in 1559 and it's set around a series of actually artificial lakes and known for its lavish royal residences. Bagor Ki Havali is a mansion built in the 18th century on the edge of Lake Picola at Gangor Ghat. It was converted to a museum in the late 1980s. There are more than 100 rooms, courtyards, terraces, so many amazing frescoes and fine mirror work. There's also royal paintings and costumes, traditional Rajasthani art and crafts, personal items of the kings. The Bagor Ki Haveli Museum is open all days of the week from 10 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. There is an entrance fee along with a camera fee. There is no air conditioning inside the museum. It's open Haveli, so make sure to wear comfortable cotton clothes. Easily take an hour and a half to two hours to cover the whole museum, and it's only five minute walking distance from Jagdish Temple. Jagdish Temple is one of the best to visit in Udaipur. Intricate carvings and fantastic sculptures make it quite appealing. They carved this in 1650. Now just think about that. It's 2022. 1650. Insane how old this is. It's a three-story structure. Carvings are of Hindu gods and elephants. There's an idol of Lord Vishnu that is chiseled in one piece of black marble. He is known as the preserver of the universe. His power protects the earth and life on it. Jagdish Temple is open to visitors of both Indian and foreign nationalities. The best part is there's no entrance fee. It opens up at 4 a.m. and it closes at 10 p.m. every day. Did you know that there is a Great Wall of India? Kumbhagar Fort, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and it was built in the 15th century. It stretches for 36 kilometers. Which is roughly 22 miles. The Great Wall is about 84 kilometers or 52 miles from Udaipur, so make sure to take a day trip to explore this cool place. It's 600 rupees a person, which is like almost $7 a person for foreigners. There will be a lot of walking at the fort. Give yourself 20, 30 minutes, bring lots of water. It is a steep climb to the top. But it's definitely worth it. This is definitely not on the tourist list for Udaipur. I've not heard Many of this guys place. never bring here. No, no person. Because it's far from the city and the people think it's some more like touristic interesting thing. Mm -hmm. This is not a tourist, even known touristic part of Udaipur. The Ahar cenotaphs in Udaipur were built to commemorate Mawar royalty and the Maharajas that ruled over the Mawar kingdom many years ago. Do note there are no bodies buried on these grounds. The cenotaphs are a memorial to remember them. Maharajas and their families were usually cremated and their ashes scattered elsewhere. There are over 372 memorial cenotaphs that were built over the course of 400 years. Definitely try to get there and see it. It's not a traditional tourist thing. We had to bribe the security guard to get in, which I think it was just because we were Americans. Definitely worth going to take a look at. Udaipur, India is also known for its tradition and culture. It's also famous for block printing. It can also be referred to as wood block printing Printing, woodcut printing, hand block printing. This art has been passed down for generations within families and communities. The one we got to visit is 900 years old. You've wow. done block printing for 900 Ma years. Yes, ego. Wow. All families do like this throughout in Rajasthan. Oh, everyone is uh, my family. So we call, we do like these kinds of work. You can even get a custom shirt for five, 600 rupees. It's definitely something that you want to put on your list is to learn about the culture when you come to Udaipur. There is so much culture to be had. We actually think that Udaipur is probably one of the better places to shop. I felt like we got better deals in Udaipur on some of the things that we had purchased there, like some artwork and some earrings for April and her daughter. We even learned how jewelry is made. I think it's fun to do and to see how things 
things are done. It's a dying art. A variety of experiences within each city or town or village. You get to observe traditions and crafts and things you would have experienced otherwise. And you know, it's so much different to see the jewelry made in India versus when we were in Guatemala and we saw the jade jewelry being made there. Definitely different experiences. We're here at Shashi cooking class. Right now I'm making pakora. We're going to grind the garlic and ginger for the pakora. We are going to prepare the basic batter. In that batter, you can put anything you want. Today we are going to make three kinds of pakoras. One potato, the second is onion, and the third one is mixed vegetable pakora. Uh, the same batter. If you're into cooking and you want to learn how to make amazing traditional Indian food, check out the card above. So this is all you can eat. It's a Rajasthani Thali. Udaipur is known for Indian Thali. We have a video on that card above. Go watch to see all the delicious food you can get for so cheap. There you go, 370 rupees, you can't beat it. So the Mandi market is a very large and famous Udaipur market that you've got to check out. See all the amazing produce and basket weaving and... I actually like the spice market better than the one in Delhi. It's nice to learn about the different spices and how much more flavorful they are when you get them fresh. Ours must be completely different when they get to America because they do not taste the same. And I got to play shopkeeper for the day, so that was kind of fun. There I go. I'm now an Indian spice market king. <laughs> we want to thank you guys for watching our video all the way to the end. If you would, hit that subscribe button, share it with a friend, and like always, thank you for living life.